Why do any of us want to be successful at something? I guess I've always felt that way about running. I've always wanted to know how far I could take it. Yeah, this is Hellgate High School. That's where I went to high school. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> uh, I coached here for four years too, so I know some of these kids. I just <laughs> retired though. How's the retirement been? Oh, dude, it's good. It's kind of a bummer because I felt like that was probably like how I was helping people the most in my life. But at some point you gotta be really selfish. Like I was at Hellgate for four years and I coached for four years and to me it felt like, like that felt like a, a circle, you know? Like I got the program for four years and then I gave back to the program for four years. Yeah, I, I loved growing up in Missoula. Uh, like my whole family were usually pretty outdoorsy. You know, we'd go camping, hiking, uh, did a lot of peak bagging when I got a little older. Yeah, I think it formed a lot of what I like to do now and Missoula was a great spot to do that, you know? Um, like, I, anything that I like to do was here, whether it was running or mountain biking, climbing mountains. Um, yeah, Montana was a really fun place to grow up as a kid. Yeah, when he came along, he was an outdoor kid right from the start. You know, he got a real early introduction to running when he was born. Like, within a week, we had him in a little baby jogger. Before he even hold his head still, we'd roll up a towel like a little horse collar, Put him in there, if it got cold, we'd put a water bottle in there, come up, and there's about a four mile out and back right here, and most every day, either Lisa or, or I would take him, uh, he probably had a thousand miles before he could walk <laughs> in the baby jogger, so he was used to seeing the terrain roll by at running speed, you know, from a real early age. Yeah, Hellgate was awesome. We had a good cross country team. Our coach, Anders Brooker, was a huge influence on me. Individuals like that in your kids' lives make all the difference in the world. You can do great stuff as a parent, but there are many other people that come into their lives, peers, coaches, teachers, that can make a huge difference. We've been very, very fortunate to have terrific people in our kids' lives. Those key people were like really important in my life. Uh, like Anders was always just teaching us that we could always work harder and do better, uh, like in a positive way. When I think back to coaching Adam, obviously he had a lot of great performances. He was a great athlete, but the thing that actually stood out to us the most as coaches and me the most as his coach was the way he just treated people. Whether you were the fastest runner or, or a brand new runner, he wanted you to feel like you were part of Hellgate Cross Country, and that meant something to him. He took pride in that, and that was really important to, to watch him take pride in what he was doing as an athlete, but also take pride in what he was doing as a leader and as a teammate. And then Mike at the time was just starting his career as a professional runner, and so I think now that I'm running these trails and doing that type of stuff, I think a lot of that may have been influenced by like what Mike was doing. I, like I thought it was just the coolest thing that he was ultra runner. He asked me to be his mentor on a senior project he did. Are you ready to go on an adventure? Yeah, baby. Adam, you know, of course picks this very ambitious goal. He wanted to bike from the lowest point in the contiguous 48 to the highest, which is 
pretty ambitious for a, a senior in high school. And yeah, that was probably one of the cooler trips to experience because I got to, you know, bring Adam into this ultra endurance kind of space that he was super interested in. Well, how about Whitney? You got power? <laughs> you got a little bit of power. <laughs> we did yeah, it. Baby. <laughs> Bad Support him through this big goal that he had set for himself and watch him succeed and didn't have to do with times or racing or whatever, but it was just a big mountain goal. And that's something about Adam is even while he raced through high school, he was always interested in adventures in the mountains. Uh, I think by my senior year, this one's a little nicer. There's always, I remember it was huge. I, I yeah, running up. at Colorado was, it was crazy. It was, uh, yeah, it was really hard, but like awesome. You know, you you spend every day with like your best friends or teammates just working all towards the same same thing. But it was like when you're on and not injured, it was awesome. And then when you're injured, like it sucked. But overall, like, yeah, I wouldn't trade it. I definitely left college feeling like I felt like running was pretty unfulfilled. Like I hadn't fulfilled my running dreams yet. I didn't know like what they were, but I felt like I had way more to give to the sport and like just didn't even touch on it in college. Uh, yeah, I came back to Missoula right after going to college, but then I ended up going on a bike trip like from the front door for a month. Uh, just like packed up my bike and like brought hiking stuff and like all this equipment and like I mapped a route and everything. And yeah, I biked like all over Montana and Idaho and Wyoming and just like tagged peaks and fished and like, I was just free. I was just like so disappointed with running after college that then I, I kind of thought that like the only joy I could have would be from running performances. And like, obviously that's not true. And I think just doing that bike trip and like being away from running for a long time, like I had, I had the time of my life and like I didn't run a step for months. So I think I learned a lot from just doing that. I just like getting out. Um, and I think I don't feel the same way about running on the track. It's just like not what I like to do the most. Um, yeah, and I think being in Montana has really helped me with that because you got the trails, you can bike on them, you can run on them, and it's all right there and it's fun. Yeah, that's an iconic summit. That's the one I climbed in high school like 20 times. Couldn't think of anything else to do. I think where you come from, where Adams come from, plays a huge role. I really believe that. I think that growing up in Montana and loving growing up in Montana made a big difference for him. If it was a cold, wet, snowy, icy day, Adam was still going to be there. Being from this state and taking pride in being from this state made a difference and makes a difference for him. I mean, he takes pride in going out when it's nasty out and putting work in it. <coughs> Sentinel has been this like challenge for my whole life. Like the hill climb when I was a freshman in high school was like to me the hardest thing, right? You just run up Sentinel as hard as you can. Um, and now it's something that me and a lot of other people do like every single day. Nice. The first trail FKT I ever set was I broke Jim Walmsley's record up Sentinel. And I think that was the best thing that ever happened to me because after doing that, I never set limits on myself. And like, I never thought about the fact that maybe when Jim did that, he wasn't at his prime or like, so there's a rumor that he like stepped out of his car and it was a hundred degrees and he just went out and sent it up Sentinel and that's his time. And like, I never thought about that. I was always like, no, like Jim did that the year he won Western States. And I don't even know if that's true. But I was like, if he did it then, like, I can do it too. 
And maybe that was just luck that that happened. But I felt like that just set me on the right track where I was like, look, I did that. I can go far in this. The first day we got here, I was definitely overwhelmed. Um, just, I mean, everything's so different. The streets have a lot more traffic, like way more than Missoula. And then we went on a run and like couldn't figure out how to get back to the hotel from there and ended up walking two miles down this interstate. And I think that combined with the jet lag and everything like was definitely like a low point for all of us, but it's all good. Uh, we figured it out, but it's uh, yeah, definitely, definitely a lot different than the US. At some point, you have to realize like not everything is going to be like the perfect environment every time. And once once you realize that and kind of just accept that things aren't going to be like perfectly what you're used to, it seems a lot better. Yeah. So big climb up to the aid station, and then you do this big. The World Championships were something I was thinking about for a while. Representing Team USA has definitely been a goal of mine since I started running. Yeah, I could definitely see that as being more pressure, but from what I've learned for myself racing like these longer trail races in the last couple of years like i i just don't do well when i feel a lot of pressure i know i'll do better if i don't think of this as like i'm like def like just doing this for my country if i just get to the starting line and i'm feeling chill and relaxed that's great like that's the best thing i can do cuz usually during these ultras like there's a couple hours where it has to shake out and like, usually by some point during the race, like it's time to go. And I'm like in that mode by then. And that's like, that would be the ideal scenario, right? But that's, that's what I hope happens tomorrow. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, that's you need sunscreen for your head. <laughs> Is it spray on? No. Ah, I'm not gonna rub sunscreen on my head. All right. I'd spray it on, but I wouldn't put it on. Like, yeah. I don't feel like I have imposter syndrome at all. Like every time I've come to these races, I feel like I've trained hard enough and I like legitimately believe I can win. So I don't, I don't have imposter syndrome with that, but I guess I don't know why. What I don't know why is like, why am I, why am I winning? And it's funny, like even yesterday, I uh, didn't feel very good through 30K, and I definitely didn't think it was gonna be my day. And then those feelings kind of just passed and like ended up having a good day. I think I was, I'm a better runner than what my results showed when I was younger. In high school, I think I had glimpses of that I was a good runner. But then in college, like none of that showed just because I was injured. And so I think now that I'm like actually able to stack all these hours like week after week and like month after month, it's like I'm actually showing like the athlete that I could have been. And then the second part of that is I just like this so much more that it doesn't, it doesn't feel like work. Like the training doesn't feel like work. I just like enjoy getting out and doing it. Like, I love the competition, but if the competition all went away, I don't think much would change. Like, I love the training, I love the process. 
people always say that, right? They're like, love the process, trust the process. But that's, that, I think that's what keeps me going. I try to be pretty humble and like chill and keep things low key. But then when it comes time to race, like I'm there for it. Like yesterday was really, really hard. Like there were two hours there where I was like in the box, dude. And yeah, uh, so maybe that's it. I guess there's a little dichotomy to me. I'm able to put on a game face during these races, usually like at some point. And fortunately, like at Western States and this, like it happened later in the race. And I think that played to my favor. I've always been someone who can grind for a pretty long time, whether it was like, like I did this 130 mile bike ride when I was in eighth grade or like a 40 mile run when I was 16. And I always thought it was like so hard, but I could always do it. Um, it's always been a skill I feel like I've kind of had it like in endurance sports is just like be able to just go for a long time. Yeah, I, I love that contrast. Like, I'm in Missoula training, and when I'm training, I try not to really leave. And then you just go to these races that are like all over the country or now, now even all over the world. Um, and it's cool. Like, there's a lot of people in town who like ask me what's next, and I tell them, like, going to Thailand, and they're like, wow, that's like so crazy. Um, but then it's always really nice to like do these things in far off places and then come back. That kind of leads me to my last question. Yeah. Uh, what is the big goal for 2023? Like, what date do you have circled on your calendar? Yeah, 2023, it would be Western States. Yeah, I'm, I want to go back. Mm -hmm.